Recalculating, recalculating, recalculating. Are those the three most annoying words that you can hear when you have your GPS going? Good morning, my friends, and welcome to another episode of Coffee Talk. I am your host, Roxanne Marbs. Today, Coach Chuck is going to be joining me, and we're going to talk about your GPS. <laughs> Good morning, good morning, good morning. If you haven't already done so, please click that like and follow button so you never miss another episode, post, workout ever again. Good morning, my friends. All right, let me get this pulled up here. Happy Friday. Katie, good morning. Kim, good morning. Janet, good morning, my friends. Um, this is day four hair, right? Is that what you would call it, day four? So I haven't done anything with it, uh, meaning I haven't washed it since I got it done on Tuesday. Today's the day. Uh, I am pretty freaking impressed. I'm pretty impressed. I just got to say, Erica, good Friday morning. Karen, good morning. Nikki, good morning. Happy Friday, my friend. Hootsack, how are you feeling? How are you feeling, my friend? Uh, uh, so interesting, everybody has these interesting little things above their names, like it says follower milestone, top fan, Hootsec, it says you're an anniversary follower. I don't know what that means though, but congratulations. <laughs> I love it, I love it. Uh, not good at all. Oh, uh, you'll have to shoot me a message. I wanna know what's going on. Lori, happy freaky Friday. Kirsten. Good morning, my friend. Coach Chuck and I may have just mentioned your name in the past five minutes, and uh, you're on my list to say good morning to on a more personal note. <laughs> Deanna, good morning. Carrie, good morning. Veda, good morning. Stacy, good morning. Kimberly, so yes, this is, I, I, I think this is classified as day four hair. So Carrie did it and on Tuesday. I haven't washed it or anything yet. I have done a little bit of dry shampoo tons of coconut oil in the past couple days um and shout out to carrie shout out to carrie i was having some major uh facial issues going on like terrible she said go to wherever and buy i think it's sarah v hydrating face wash so of course i bought that and i bought the sarah v night cream and i bought the sarah v spf day cream uh you i wish i would have taken a picture of my face on tuesday like it doesn't even, I still have a little bit of some, but it's crazy. It's crazy. I was having some issues. All right. I, I, I digress. I digress. Stacy, good morning. Kimberly Hootsack. Yes, November 5th is my year, five-year BBF anniversary. I don't know how the fan page would know that, but I am digging it. I'm digging it. Don't back. Good morning, Corey. Good morning, coaching. Clutch the hair looks great. Thank you, my friend. Becca, good morning. Kendra, good morning. Good morning, my friends. Molly, buenos dias. Kylie, good morning. Lisa, good morning. Carrie, so awesome. Yes, yes, it's also awesome. Tammy, good morning. Go on. All right. Does this sound familiar? Calculating. Continue point seven miles. Well, that might not sound. Recalculating. Recalculating. Yes. Yeah, I don't know what I 40 East is, but I tried to find. Do you understand where we're going so with this? What road are you driving down right now? Right all right. Now? All right. All right. All right. So check it out. The name of this one is called Recalculating, my friends. Sometimes what happens? We get off the beaten path, right? We set a destination. This is the crazy thing about GPS. Number one, we know where we want to go. Number two, we have to get eyes on where we currently are. And number three, we got to go and travel down that path. And while we're traveling down that path, sometimes we get a little bit off track, we get lost. And that little inner GPS, that little inner voice, whatever that inner voice sounds like, says, hey, sounds a little bit something like this. Hey, Chuck. <laughs> hey, uh, you missed your smoothie today. Uh, recalculating. Hey, Chuck. Hey, Chuck. Uh, you, you, Recalculating. You, you went back for seconds. Yes. Hey, Chuck, <laughs> you're eating out of the chip bag again. So what, is that diet drive? No, that would be... All right, so do you find yourself, right? That you, might be Cheat Street. So are you cheat on... Street. All right, we're going to talk about the different paths that you might be on. We have a few of them for you today. We thought we'd have a little bit of fun with this. So number one... I wish uh, I had a steering wheel right now. I think number one, 
Uh, let's talk about Weekend Way. Oh, yeah. Weekend, weekend way. way. Are you driving down Weekend Way? We are, we're on our way there right now. You can feel it, can't you? T-G-I-F. Weekend Way. Here I come. <laughs> yeah, Weekend Way. Weekend Way has uh, trips to family events. It has, you know, uh, if you live in Green Bay, there's a Packer game this oh, weekend. Oh, yeah. Right? Um, Packer drive. <laughs> yeah. There is baseball. Like, there's sports stuff. Taking your kids all over the place. Friends. Weekend way, right? We're driving down Weekend Way, right? We were on the, we were on, we were on this path, and Weekend Way did a little one of these. We were on the straight and narrow. We yeah. were on the straight and narrow. We Weekend were on the way highway. was like, I'm gonna take another 25 mile detour here to get back on track, right? So I'm just gonna give myself an extra two months. Uh, before I get back on the street, right? And do you want to know what drives me crazy? No is pun when, intended. No, no pun intended. What drives me crazy is when I do have my GPS on and I need to pull over for gas or whatever it is, and then the time, then I lose time. I lose time on mm. my trip. I despise that. Like yeah. when I get in and I set my GPS and it tells me four hours and 20 minutes, when I start to see that number creep back to four hours and 30 minutes, ooh, four ooh, hours ooh. and 40 minutes, take it away, coach. When you, <laughs> not only when you take a detour, <sighs> but guess what? When you let your foot off the gas. Yep. Oh, yep. we talked about that yesterday, right? Yep. Letting yep. You, taking your foot off the gas, right? All right. So are you on weekend way? What about Cheat Street? What about Cheat Street? Oh, Does this I'm, need much explanation? Uh, and I feel like especially with Halloween creeping up and the chocolates and the candy bars we all have around right now, Cheat Street is, it's like we're, we're driving, we, we might be going up there slow, but we are pulling up to it. So are you ready for that? Yeah, Cheat Street, man. Like, all right, Cheat Street for me is, I, I'm like, okay, I'm going to schedule in a little treat for myself. And then that becomes the next day and then a couple more days. Like a meal becomes a day, a day becomes a couple, a couple becomes a week. And before you know it, you're like totally just blew. Like you literally pulled over to the side of the road and put a bomb in your car and just blew it up. <laughs> like I, I pulled my car over, I slashed all four tires, I lit it on fire and then I walked away from it. Like I'm not on the path, I like it blew it up. Yep, yep. Right? So Deanna said weekend way bound, headed to Door County tonight to spend the night with Beta York and then watching Nick Nyberg attempt the fall 50 solo run. Costco and Aldi run today to have smart choices and not get detoured. I love it. I love it. I Becca, love we it. got two more for you. Hang tight. I, hang need, tight. I needed this going into the weekends. I also listened to the new nugget Aww. this morning. I love it. And I feel like it's setting me up for the weekend. Thank Boom. you so much. High five, Boom. coach. Oh, thanks, High thanks. five. Right. If you missed yesterday's, right? Seven simple steps to burning stubborn body fat. Go check that out. Go check All right. It out. So we got Weekend Way and Cheat Street. Um, what about diet drive? Now, diet drive, I think, is one where people think they need to, that the straight and narrow path is diet drive, and they need to be on diet drive in order to get to their, to the, to the land of, the land of the free, the land of the, you know, whatever, your destination. Uh, I don't believe that's the truth. So, I want to read Renee's comment here, and I want to, because I want to tie it into what you just said. This will be a determining factor to get through Halloween. My goal is to not have any candy. It is a trigger for a downhill slide. So I have to ask though, hmm. you've got two triggers. Is it not having any at all that's gonna set you off and then you're gonna end up binging at the end? Or can you set a couple pieces aside to have maybe Friday, Saturday, and Sunday? Two or three pieces, your favorite candies, they're in your plan. Which one is going to set you up more for success. Right. Really right. think about that. Right. So diet, diet drive. Uh, there's one, I just made it up in my head. Diet drive <laughs> could lead to binge Boulevard. Oh, ooh, I got to write that all right, down. Diet coach. drive could lead to binge Boulevard, baby, because you know what? When we're on diet drive, what is it all about? It's about uh, diet drive. Diet drive turns into deprivation drive. Yep. And we, uh, we are not about deprivation. No, no. It's about discipline. If there, if you buy that bag of candy for the trick or treaters, but it's your favorite candy, have yeah. a couple. I would rather you were disciplined instead of deprived because yep. deprivation discipline, is not going to take you yep. anywhere good. Deprivation is a dirty word. Discipline is not, right? Oh, yes. And, and I'll tell you a little story about my mom. She's 71. Why? All right. So like at, six years ago at the age of 65, okay, she has battled weight her whole life. Her whole life, she's been 100 pounds overweight. She's lost 100 pounds and gained it almost all back. She lost the 100 pounds the original time on a liquid diet. So it was like two, li this was before like protein shakes were even really a thing. And like this crazy liquid diet thing that she did and she'd barely eat a meal at the end of the day, gained it all back and then some, it was crazy, it was crazy, it was crazy, right? 
But anyways, so 65 years old, we finally start talking and I get her on a plan. She ended up losing, so she had about 55 pounds to lose. She lost it and she's kept it off now for the last six years. Here's why I'm sharing this. Here's one thing that she did was she got the little, the, the Halloween M&M packets, you know, the little ones that probably have like 15 M&Ms in them and she'd buy that and a couple times per week, not every, not every night, not every night, but a couple times per week, she would have her little M&Ms. After she had her salad. After she had her she, salad. Yeah. Carol just has her salad yeah. every night. That's her go-to. She gets the, she gets rotisserie chicken or whatever and puts it on top. And she has that little treat at the end. And it has not deterred her progress, my friends. She's doing all of the She's things. She's kept it off. And she has her treat. Yeah. No, she I mean, did she treat. do that forever? No. But I think it was interesting because my mom was the ultimate deprivation dieter. Like... You want to look up dieter in the dictionary? There's a picture of Carol Marbs in there. <laughs> and if you look up cabbage diet, she's there. If you look at Atkins diet, I, I'm there she's with there. her. She's Atkins there with diet, her. she's there. I'm like, there with her. It's, yeah, and I'm not throwing her under the bus. So Renee, I, she said, I think maybe I tried to set them aside and suddenly it becomes more and more. I can try the one piece a day and work net, but the rest needs to be away from me. Yeah, for Here's sure. Here's what I would say. If you really feel like you can't have them and you know it won't lead to a binge, that's okay. Yeah. But I tried to think of the long term it's okay right now to have that really hardcore discipline yeah. but eventually are you never going to have any of that again if you think someday you will it, it's best to learn how to have those triggers there now and handle them and deal with them again you only know your limits i do not we have another one coming i'm going to hold off for a minute so like if you guys just tuned in we got a bunch of people on here now all right so where are you at are you are you on cheat street are you on weekend way are you on Binge Boulevard? Are you on Diet Drive? Where are you at? We got one more. I'm gonna hold off in a second. I'm gonna tell you a little something about one year ago. One year ago uh, and change. One year and change. In August of last year, right? I was, I through COVID or whatever, in the beginning parts of COVID, I gained a lot of weight. Like we both gained weight. We were, we were both on a downward slide. We were doing like not healthy pizza. Like now what? weight wise, I had only gained, and I say only 10 pounds. But it was pure body fat. Pure body We weren't fats. feeling good at all. We weren't feeling good at all, okay? So in August, at the end of summer last year, I was like, listen, I'm like, I need a break from alcohol. And alcohol is her driver. It's not mine, but I was like, I just, I hate the way I feel. Sugar is my demon, not really hers. So I said, let's do this together. So we went, we abstained from alcohol, but then we took a sugar challenge. And the challenge was to only allow one sweet treat in a week. And if we wanted to do anything beyond that, we had to go purchase, and we did. We, we committed to buying a healthy um, bakery cookbook or whatever you wanna call it, right? Like we, we would bake healthy alternatives with like almond flour, right? And zero calorie sweetener swerve, stuff. Yep, yeah, swerve, yep. So we did that to kind of, but, but again, here was, once a week we went to Starbucks and I got a caramel macchiato. There's sugar in that, but I literally tracked it. So it was gonna be the one time per week that I was going to have like scheduled sugar. I didn't have it in my home. Now, if I was gonna go bring cookies into the house, I would have just binged like crazy. I know, but the goal of what I did, so I was, I was on Sugar Street, right? I was on Sugar Street big time. So I knew that I was out of control. And I told my wife, I told Roxanne, I said, hey, listen, I'm like, I'm out of control. I need to get control. So, you know, to Renee's point too, if I would have tried to do that with extra sweets in the home, I probably would have struggled. Right. I had to so figure- So we get it, Renee, yes. I had to figure out a way to make it work. All right, we got one more, we got one more. All right, we got one more. It's kind of like Binge Boulevard, Bard, but this is what, we're gonna call this one Rebound Road. Oh Re yeah. So you're going down Diet Drive and then you hook a left on Rebound Road. And so what this is, we we deprive ourselves all week long. It's kind of a weekend way thing too, right? Like. We basically put the clamps down Monday through Friday afternoon and then release the beast, right? For like three, for like two and a half days. Rebounding means like, or in a chat, uh, Chris Hutsek, she talked about this, right? She's, she's awesome for 21 days. And then for one week in between challenges, all of a sudden it's rebound road. Right. So Amy said, every time so far, if I let myself have the handful of M&Ms, it's like an addiction and I just want more and more. So am I just not ready? You're not ready. Yeah. It still has control over you. So when right. I gave up alcohol last year, it pretty much yeah, took Jason and four Carrie. months. It took four months for me to feel in control, to have one 
normal sized cocktail. It took me yep. four months. Now, yep. I still want to tell you, like the triggers. So at night when we're sitting down and relaxing and like a car door shuts and all four dogs start barking, that's a trigger for me. Like my stressors go up and instantly I say, I could go have a glass of wine right Like, like that's how fragile my my triggers are so I'm, I'm not ready i can't just yep. go have a small glass of wine when i'm sitting at home it just doesn't work and, like and that so amy uh, makes a great point and i'm going to relate it back to the story i just told so i told coach i said hey i'm like as far as getting control over the sugar for me amy i am the exact same way if you and that's give, how renee is feeling if yes. you give me one cookie and there's there's nine left in the container Get out of my way. I will push my wife into the wall. <laughs> she is, I will chop her hand off. You better, she we've knows. Had, we've had some moments. We, yeah. have, we have had some moments over, had, we, we over food in the house. Like, <laughs> yeah. like it's funny because one of us will always be the strong one. And right. the strong one will usually get the knife eyes. Like, but, okay, should we throw this away now? Sure, sure. And so here's my point. So when I told the coach and I said, hey, I'm like, all right, I... I love, I love our little like Dunkin' Donuts and our Starbucks run once a week or whatever. So I was like, well, that for me is something that is a nice little sweet treat. It's not a cookie. It's not a candy bar. It's not, it's not a deep rooted trigger. And it's a control, it's in a controlled environment. We, I, we order whatever, we order yeah, the normal size. We don't order anymore. the large. Right. We're not and going then, back. And then we're done. Right. We drive away with it and right. we're done. Right. But, but again, so my cookie in the house my handful of M&Ms is her alcohol. Yep. It's the same thing. So Amy, yes, Amy, I'd say, no, you're not ready. You may, it may never be. It may never be that for you, right? Like I shared my mom's example because I think for her, um, her, her deep-rooted triggers probably aren't M&Ms. Yes. They're probably not M&Ms. Renee said yes, and you have to buy that and leave. It isn't in your face. Yes, with the Halloween candy, I don't. we don't really buy that anymore, or I'll buy the things that we don't like that we, but I'll tell you, even buying the things we don't like, just having that extra treat in the house, it calls out to oh, yeah. us. It calls out to us. Oh yeah. Alcohol Alley, Jason and Carrie just wanted Alcohol to represent. Alcohol Alley, yep, yeah. yep. That's a that has been a struggle for me my whole life. I mean, right now at forty five, I feel like I have the most control over it. Uh, when we go on vacation, it used to be I would start the morning with mimosas and I would drink all day long. Our last vacation, we made it a goal. We had to drink almost all of our water and no alcohol before awesome. noon. No alcohol before noon, and then I would decide. Have I had enough water? Because if I haven't, I cannot have that first drink yet. Who sent us some stars? Is that Renee? Who sent us stars? Aww. It was Renee. You're the best. You're the best. Well, that's uh, just going to go into Weekend Warrior. Potato Warrior's chip gonna... circle is my road. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and again, like... Potato chip parkway. You open that big bag, right? What about having a single serving bag? What about telling yourself, I can have this twice a week. Mm. I can have this three times a week. I'll make it work into my program. It's when mm. we open that bag and we yeah. go sit on the couch to watch the TV that that becomes an issue. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting people like human beings, like genetically are geared. I, I'm going to say that like 75% of culture is geared towards uh, sugar sweets and 25% are geared like Didi. Salty. that they, they crave like Salty like cheese, yeah. yeah, salty, crunchy, right? And then I think we all are, we're all right teeter-tottering on the potential alcohol alley. Like right. it's just a very addictive thing. Um, but here's another, yeah, on to Coach Roxanne's point, this is just a bonus uh, coaching tip right now. Don't ever, ever eat out of an open container like a bag of chips. Don't. Didi said bag and couch is how I drive. Yeah. Yep, Do, that's dangerous. Don't ever. If, if every person, if all 50 of you on here right now are on demand, if you make a commitment to yourself in this moment, do not ever eat out of an open container ever again. And it's what, getting behind the wheel with alcohol. Yeah. Like you, you're, you're literally wired to go to the bottom of the bag. Yep. One of the most powerful things you can do, even if, if even if like chips, uh, pretzels, anything that snacky stuff where you buy in big quantities, you have to get in the discipline. You don't have to do anything, but I would recommend getting in the discipline of portioning it out. Whether you actually weigh it out. Or count, just go or, buy or the just, single serve bags. Yeah, yeah. right. Yep. Or, or just put it on a small plate. Like you, yep. don't, you don't have to get so anal where you count out every single chip. Like literally just get a little plate, 
put a serving on there and then wrap it up and don't go back to it. But yep. if you go to the movie theater, it's deadly to get the extra large popcorn. I, I know when I go to the movies, I mean, that's, that is definitely my, that's my cheat street. I am getting the biggest bucket of popcorn and the biggest diet Mountain Dew. And that's how I'm going to roll. <laughs> I read a, I read an interesting case study. I, I believe I believe this case study is documented in the book Atomic Habits by James Clear, which if you have not bought in the book Atomic Habits, it maybe an audio book might be better. It's a little dry, but it's one of the best books on building habits I've ever read in my entire life, Atomic Habits. Anyways, he talks about this story, right? He talks about how we're wired to get to the bottom. So they did this, they, they put a bunch of people in a movie theater and they gave them different sized bags. They gave them the junior bag. They were only allowed to have one a junior bag, a medium, a large, and the extra large. And all of them had two week old stale crappy popcorn. Two week old, two week old. They weren't allowed to go back. They, they were not allowed to ha ask for more, right? And they were giving, the, it was like either every single one or like 90 plus percent, guess what they did? Ate it all. And it didn't matter the size. I could see myself doing that. all the way to the bottom. Like we are wired to get to the bottom because if you just, you just have something to do. It's yeah. like this. The, and, and again, a lot of those foods, they don't satiate you. No, especially like they, popcorn and potato or chips. Doritos. Yeah. Yeah. They pay people like hundreds of thousands of dollars to get the Dorito to like melt at a certain point on your tongue right? And never keep you full. So you're constantly wanting more. It's insane. Veda said, I admit I'm the bad neighbor that doesn't turn on the light for Halloween. I make individual bags for my favorite neighbor kids. That way it's not in my house. That's not yeah, that's a bad smart. neighbor. That's smart. That's, that's super smart. smart. Um, bag and couches, how I drive, like driving into a wall. I don't have them in the house right now. I have to keep them away for a while. Discipline. Mm. Discipline, my friend. Hutek, you gave me a great suggestion yesterday, Chuck, about portioning mm. out the energy bites I made. I, Those I had to. Yes, we <laughs> both do. Like, I had to. Anytime there's something like that in the house, I'll the tell you second another story. there's a trigger or boredom, what do you do? I'll tell you another story, right? Yep. This hap this was this was around the time Goodbye, when Kirsten. When Coach and I first met and I made I made the energy ball mix. And it's like, the instructions are like, you mix it up and it's like, leave it in the fridge to set. And then you make the balls. <laughs> yeah, I let it in the fridge to sit. And then you know what I did? I took a spoon and guess what? I got literally got sick. Like I took a good thing and made it terrible. And I learned my lesson. I said, if I'm ever gonna do that again, yes. I put them in like two to three in a Ziploc and only one Ziploc. So yeah, and you can take anything that's good for you and make it not good. And that's something the Fat Rock San used to do. I would bake cookies, I would bake cakes, I would bake brownies. And I would sit down with the pan and eat with a fork until yes, I was sick. But I'm not sick enough that I didn't go back a couple hours later and do it again. Lori, um, just yep. make that commitment the next time. You know, Lori, here's the thing. If you guys resonate with Lori right now and what she just typed in, that you will continue to do that until you have that awareness moment, right? What was the word that we used? What well, was awareness, but it was to reflect, reflect. Pause and reflect. Pause. Like, Pause so if you reflect. find yourself and you have to identify what's that trigger and you have to just throw it out. Like there's no, I don't care if that bag of chips costed you twenty five dollars. Throw it out, right? It's costing you years on your life. This weekend, tonight, purge, purge those cupboards. If there are things in there that are not going to get you to your goals, get rid of them and trigger your kids. Don't need it either. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we're gonna wrap it up. So, are you on Diet Drive, Cheat Street, Weekend Way, Rebound Road, Binge Boulevard, Alcohol Avenue, Potato Chip Circle? <laughs> <laughs> whatever it may be. I love it. I let me watch. These are eye opening things. So, they are, yes. and you know, what's great about alliteration. It helps you remember yep. alliteration. So everything we did today, like, ah, oh, weekend way, ah, uh, diet drive. Your GPS should start sounding like coach Chuck. Recalculating, or yes. recalculating, <laughs> recalculating. All right, guys, we love you so much. It's been an amazing week. Uh, tomorrow morning, join us at 7 30 AM central time for a 60 minute weekend warrior boot camp. Uh, what else? We got going. Anything else spicy happening? Oh, back, back to coffee talk Monday morning. Back I, I to want to be talk. on lifestyle lane. Oh, I oh, got to write that down. Renee, lifestyle ding, 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 lane. ding, yep, ding, ding. Yep, yeah. All right. All right. That's where we all want to oh, be. Oh my, my goodness. How about healthy highway? 
Get on that healthy highway. All right, I don't know. It's just like God's dropping bombs right now. How about the Better Body Bus? Woo! Get on the Better Body Bus to Healthy Highway and Lifestyle Lane. I love it. I'm so I can't even I can't even sit here. I just I gotta move. All right, you guys are awesome. All right, we love you all. I'll see you back here on Monday morning, my friends. See you later.